Good morning. Uh, I always say good morning to start it out because after all, morning is when you begin things and I'm just sort of beginning things. They asked me to talk on any subject I wanted to talk on. And yes, we do all sorts of wonderful, interesting, technical work. So what I decided on was this, to think for yourself. I mean, I could give you maybe a nugget of wisdom relating to some technical aspect, but realistically, what's going to help you most in your life is basically taking control of it for yourselves. And it's, it seems maybe a little bit dissonant to have me as a, a technical expert following a couple of very influential and very interesting artists. But actually, several of the things they've already said are going to be emphasized here in the next 15 minutes or so. What they have said and realized and know and do is actually very similar to what I'm going to be talking to you about, thinking for yourself. Now, you may say, is this necessary? Um, really? Uh, you know, I think for myself, right? He thinks for himself. She thinks for herself, right? And, and who is this guy anyway? Why does he purport to have the authority to tell me how to think? Well, I'll tell you why. When I was young, I had a good friend of mine, very close to me. We grew up together. And this friend of mine had uh, troubles, kind of interesting, as, as was mentioned earlier. Uh, he had uh, a learning disability, dyslexia. It makes reading and writing very difficult, uh, just terrible handwriting, and spelling in English was impossible for him. And uh, he's slightly autistic, so he has a very hard time understanding other people's emotional responses to things. Actually, he failed out of fourth grade and had to take uh, remedial education and things like this. Um, in fact, he was always getting in trouble at school for answering things the wrong way. He'd get the right answer, he'd just answer it the wrong way and get in trouble. So eventually he went on to graduate and in fact uh, traveled the world, uh, had a backpack and took off for about a year, worked in war zones in Central America, studying propaganda and how one event would be covered by two newspapers, one for the Contras and the US government and one for the Sandinistas and the Russian government. The same event was reported on very, very differently by the two sides. So he studied propaganda for a while, eventually got a PhD, was, was a lecturer right here at USM, and then started a high-tech spin-off company just down the road. OK, I have a terrible admission. Um, actually, my friend, that's, that really is me. So, <laughs> so for me, thinking for yourself, it's not really a choice. I, I'm not a leader. I don't want you guys to follow me. I don't want you to vote for who I vote for. I don't need your donation. I want you to think for yourself. What, what disturbs me is when I see a lot of people following. I just can't take it. When I see all these people following, they're not doing what they want to do, they're doing what somebody else wants them to do. Okay, well, who, who thinks for you? But are you sure? Who, who thinks for you? Who? One way to get to that is, who wants to think for you? And that's a really easy question to answer. Who wants to think for me? Well, gosh, there's a long list of who wants to think for me. Governments want to think for me. Um, corporations want to think for me. Religious leaders want to think for me. Society wants to think. My parents want to think for me. My neighbors want to think for me. My wife, my children want to think for me. Wait a minute, pretty much everybody I know wants to think for me. OK, why? What do they want out of it? Well, there's two basic reasons, which really comes down to one basic reason. They want money or they want power. They want to influence your decision making so that they can make your money, they can control you somehow. This is, this is why people manipulate other people. So what happens? Is it so bad? I mean, you know, okay, yeah, so you, you give in, you do what your neighbors want, you marry who your parents, you know, I'm Chinese, so I have to marry Chinese because uh, otherwise my parents would be terribly upset. Um, is that all that bad? Well, <laughs> well, um, it, it could be. What happens is, you wind up drinking what Coca-Cola wants you to drink. You wind up driving what Toyota wants you to drive. You wind up voting for who the party in power wants you to vote for. Hmm, this is seeming worse and worse somehow. You follow. You know, you, you aren't thinking for yourself. You're doing what they want you to do. Is this a bad thing? Well, 
Oh, you, you tell me. <clears throat> the problem with it is, in the end, you're responsible for your action. When you commit a crime, you go to jail. It's not the guy that says, hey, let's go spray paint the walls. <laughs> <laughs> so what I admire is someone who says, okay, it may be illegal, the government may tell me this is not supported, but damn it, I'm gonna do it. It's like, yeah. Okay, just make sure that you're doing what's right, what's right for you, what's right for you in the long term. Ayn Rand, uh, she was a philosopher, and she had a concept called rational selfishness. We need to be selfish, but in a rational manner. We need to be selfish in a long-term sort of way. We need to do what's right. Not right now, yes, I love ice cream. I'm not going to sit down and eat a whole liter of ice cream every single day. You have to be selfish, but in a rational fashion. I can't be a good parent if I don't take care of myself first, right? So um, you have to do the right thing. You're responsible for your actions, even if someone else tells you what to do. A good example of this is World War II. The Germans, the Japanese, they did horrendous things. They killed millions and millions of people. And each time it was, well, my superior told me I was supposed to gas these people, so yeah, sure, I gas them, but I'm not responsible for my actions. The hell you're not. <laughs> do you think somebody who was killed gives a shit who told them to do it or not do it? No. no they're just as dead, right? You're responsible for your actions, regardless of who tells you to do what. You choose in the end. Who did this to me? Oh, oh, oh my gosh, you know, how many times have I heard that? Uh, I have a friend, and this time it's, it's not me, it's actually a friend. <laughs> I have a friend, and he's fat, he's overweight, he's unhappy, he has no time, and he has no money. And he says, who did this to me? Well, as one of our wonderful speakers just now said, you're responsible for not, not, just, not just everything in life, but also making your own luck. He's unlucky. I'm a victim of circumstance. Why is he a victim of circumstance? Because he set it up that way. He allowed himself to fall into situations where he would be a victim of circumstance. For example, what does he do? Well, he, he drinks Coke, and he's got a big, big pickup truck. I don't know why he's, he had a smaller car, but he traded in to buy a big pickup truck. Why? Because it's big and I can haul stuff. So I said, what are you hauling? He's like, well, I don't know, but maybe in a couple weeks I might have to haul something. Okay. Okay. You know, it uses a lot of fuel and it's flashy and, you know, and it's got lights and all sorts of shit. I don't know who the lights are for. It doesn't really go faster or anything. But he's got a club membership that he pays for because, you know, if you've got a club membership and you pay for it, then you're probably going to get skinny, right? No. Well, actually, he's poor. And, and he's broke, and he's paying for a membership, and he's paying for a big fancy car, and he's not in control of his life. And I told him, put down the Coke, shut off the TV, get your ass off the couch, sell your club membership, get rid of your club, sell your car, buy a bicycle. You really want to take control of your life? Well, then be rationally selfish. Control your life. You jump on your bicycle and ride back and forth to work. I ride 20 kilometers a day back and forth to work. Why? because that's the only way I know I'm going to get enough exercise and I'm not jittery. So um, if he put down the Coke and, you know, he, he rode his bike, guess what? He'd have more money in his pocket and he certainly would be healthier regardless of what his weight winds up being. Uh, okay, he, he could do this. Uh, but it requires, it requires action. It requires him to take control of his life. When you're looking for who to blame for your situation, who did this to me? Well, the blame vector only points one way. You did this to yourself. No one else can make me succeed or fail. If I want to if I want to climb Mount Everest, uh, this guy is not going to carry my ass up and down Mount Everest, right? Also, he's not going to prevent me from going up Mount Everest if I really want to go up Mount Everest, right? Uh, the the blame vector only points one way. So, Thinking for yourself is difficult. It requires, uh, and, and this is an excellent segue, it requires a little bit of work. It requires you some time to Google things. You want to learn about a galaxy. You want to learn about uh, who owns a media company. You want to learn about, Google it, right? It requires work. It requires self-discipline, right? I want to do what's right for me in the long term. Well, I need to be disciplined enough to, to do this. Do what's right. Do what's right 
for you, for your family, for your country, for your neighbors, sort of in that order. And, and that requires a, a degree of responsibility. Um, uh, it also requires effort, right? Sometimes, yes, you, you have to say, someone told me something and I'm not really sure it's true. Let me, let me go do a little bit of research. Um, there's a, a couple things that, um, there's a couple things that, uh, tools that you can, you can use, right? You, you, don't, you don't get something handed to you. Uh, I really want a big fancy car and, and I'm disappointed because I don't have a big fancy car. Well, how do you go get a big fancy car? You, you, you turn off the TV first, right? The first thing is always turn off your TV. <laughs> And then you know, you'd be amazed how much extra time you have when you turn your TV off every day. Um, and then you go out and you work, and you work hard for it, and you're dedicated long term, right? The speakers already have mentioned the very same thing. You have to have long term dedication and conviction. You set yourself a timeline and you work towards it. If I've got a goal, my goal is to reach the top of the stairs, I don't jump there. I walk there st one step at a time until I get there. And you don't go halfway up and stop and go, Oh gosh, do I really want this? You, you, you know, you figure out what you want first and then you work towards getting it. One of the other concepts that I want to introduce to you is to think critically. When someone tells you something, when a professor tells you something, I, I know I'm a professor, um, when a professor tells you something, you need to think about it, say, is this true or not? Um, I run an engineering company and all the time my guys are saying, Oh, but if I make the brake pad larger, it doesn't actually affect the coefficient of friction and the frictional force. And I'm like, you learned that at school, didn't you? Well, it's not true. Guess what? Your professors lied to you. Um, <laughs> <laughs> what they teach you is stuff that's simple to teach, right? It's simple to teach, it's simple to learn. That doesn't mean it's actually true. And when you start investigating, you find out, whoa, whoa, whoa. The coefficient of friction, which they always say is not a function of velocity, yeah, it's a function of relative velocity. And guess what? The, the adhesion force you can get off of a brake pad does depend on the size of the brake pad, and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So you need to think critically. How, you know, what are some of the, the, the fun, fundamental aspects of thinking critically? One, you've got to have knowledge. Uh, you have to be able to say, someone gave me a piece of data, can I verify this? Uh, somebody made a statement. Was it emotional fluff or was there any content in it? Um, someone said, hey, I have to run off and kill these people because they're not like us. We're the good people, they're the bad people, and therefore we're justified in killing them. Okay, so what I heard was, we're justified in killing them because they're not the same as us. That's the just name. Now they have they may have been banging their fist on a podium and they may have had, you know, some fancy religious clothes or something like that, but this doesn't change the fact of what they said was they're different, therefore we're justified in killing them. If you follow that, then you're doing something wrong. This is a a, a dipstick of morality. How do you measure if you're doing something right or wrong? Bad people do bad things. Good people do good things. That's it, it's pretty straightforward, right? If you say, well, no, no, I'm doing bad things, but it's for a good reason. No, 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 no. If you're doing bad things, it's because you're a bad person. So uh, you need to think th about things, think critically, you need to have some knowledge and a little bit of common sense. When someone says, no, I, I know I had to kill a lot of people in order to implement collective farming in Russia, but collective farming is a good thing and so it was really a good thing. Joseph Stalin, right? He killed, uh, what, 20 million of his own people? That's a bad thing, sorry. So there's two tricks that I'm gonna give you that help you think critically. The first one is to follow money. When you have an interaction, when you have a discussion, when you see a piece of information, very often it's trying to influence the flow of money in some sort of financial transaction. Where does the money come from and where does it go to? Another concept is to consider the source. So you've heard this all before, but, but has this source given you good information before? Um, what, was, what were the facts of what they told you? Can you go verify that? So another key concept, which I believe was reflected earlier, is to focus on your sphere of influence. That is, consists of, of two parts. What affects you and what you can affect. Now, you can worry about Palestine and you can say, I want to solve the problem in Palestine. Yes, me too. The problem is it doesn't affect me and I can't affect it. 
the situations in Malaysia, yeah, those affect me. And guess what? I have a lot easier time affecting those than worrying about Palestine or Tibet or any of those things. So this is the end. Is it the end or is it the beginning? Actually, today is a very special occasion. I mean, apart from just uh, uh, being a TED Talk, um, today, uh, for everyone in this room, is kind of a special occasion. Today is the first day of the rest of your life. You, right now, have the ability and indeed the duty to choose for yourselves what you're going to do. Are you going to follow and be led around by powers that be? Or are you going to think for yourself and make these decisions? Um, think rationally and critically. You will make this decision, guaranteed. You will decide to follow or to be unique and independent and do it your own way. What I'm asking you is just one thing. All I want you to do is to make that decision consciously, to go out and say, I'm going to follow because it's too hard to fight, right? It is difficult. As soon as you start thinking for yourself, you get busted under the Internal Security Act or, or the police come and get you or something like that, right? <laughs> thinking for yourself is very dangerous. So I'm just asking you for one thing. Make up your mind for yourself to think for yourself or not do it. That's it. I'm out of time. Thank you very much.